Hello everyone and welcome to the order. Today I'll be teaching you how to troubleshoot a PC power supply. Imagine that your PC shuts down without any warning and it doesn't want to turn back on. The first thing you should do is to check your power supply. Or imagine another scenario. Imagine that you are buying a used PSU and you want to see if it's working. Well, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform the so-called idle voltage test in order to determine the condition of your power supply. I must warn you that these measurements can be very dangerous, death or serious injury may occur. So always be careful when handling electricity and make sure that you are using the proper equipment. Before I proceed to the tutorial I want to quickly explain how a power supply works and what I am going to measure. What is a power supply? Well, it is a sophisticated voltage regulator which converts the alternating current from your outlet to direct current and also it steps down the voltage to the levels required by your PC. This is done through various components like PWM controllers, DC-DC converters, filtering elements and more. These elements work together to supply the demands of your system. I mentioned voltages. A PC power supply has several rails which output 5 main voltages which I am going to measure today, they are plus 3.3, plus 5, plus 12 and minus 12 volts. Next up, we must define the power supply's connectors and the colors of its leads. Here are the connectors. I'll be measuring the 20 plus 4 pin ATX connector, the 8 pin CPU connector, the Molex connectors and the PCI Express connectors. Now these are not all of the available connectors from the PSU, but they are the only ones that I can measure with a standard multimeter, plus they feature every output voltage from the PSU. Let's move on to the cables. The power supply's cables have several different colors which supply different voltages. I have listed them on the screen. Basically, I'll be measuring the potential between each colored cable opposed to ground. But wait, a lot of modern power supplies have all black cables. How can you make the measurements then? Well, to answer that, we need to go back to the PSU's connectors. If you look carefully, you will notice that each connector has a specific mark and specific pin shapes which define its pinout. The ATX, CPU and PCI Express connectors have a clip on the side which helps us to determine their orientation. The 4-pin Molex connector, however, doesn't have a clip, it has two small cutouts on each side. Here you can see a detailed pinout of all of the main PSU connectors. Knowing their marks and configurations we can proceed to measuring their parameters without knowing the color of their cables. One last thing that I need to define for you is the ATX voltage specifications. In the table below I have listed the standard voltage outputs of ATX PSUs and their maximum deviations. If any of our measurements are outside of these ranges then we have a faulty PSU. You. Ok, we have covered the basics, now let's proceed to the measurements. So here are the tools that you will need for this procedure. You will need a basic multimeter with the appropriate voltage ranges and a circuit testing function, a piece of insulated wire and some latex gloves and of course a potentially faulty power supply. Before you begin, make sure that your body is not touching anything grounded, otherwise if your PSU is somehow damaged so that it outputs high voltage, you may be electrocuted. So let's begin. First we will start off with the power cable. We will measure it with the circuit test function on our multimeter. This function tests if there is a connection between the probes. This is a standard power supply cable with an EU power plug. Power supplies over in the US have the same plug on this side but a different one on this side. First we need to measure the middle pins on both ends. These are the pins which ground the enclosure of your power supply and your case. Next we will make some cross connection measurements to ensure that the cable isn't shorted somewhere.
Next we will measure if there is a connection between the PSU's AC ground pin and its enclosure. Again we will use the circuit test function. If you have a coated PSU then your multimeter may not read the connection. In that case you can use the threads as a measuring point or you can tighten one of the mounting screws on your power supply and then take a measurement from there. If both the enclosure and the cable check out, then we can plug in the PSU and proceed to the tests. In order to measure the output voltages, we need to jumpstart the PSU. This is done by connecting the green power on pin to any of the grounds. We will make this connection using the piece of insulated wire. If you have an all black PSU, then go back to the connector pinout section of the video, there you will see the location of the power on pin and the grounds. Remember, always exercise caution. If the PSU's fan begins to spin after you've made the connection, then we can proceed to the measurements. Now switch the multimeter to the DC voltage measurement function. Then connect the black probe to any of the grounds. I usually choose the Molex ground. First I will start by measuring the 24 pin ATX connector. Please note that our PSU has only a 20 pin ATX connector. The additional 4 pins are listed in the pinout diagram. Next I'll be measuring the 4 pin CPU connector and finally the Molex connector. Now because this is a very old PSU, it doesn't have PCI Express connectors, but the pinout diagram should be more than enough to make the measurements. So here are the average results and here are the ATX specifications. We can see that the results are within the specified limits. Let's make a quick summary of the procedure. Remember to take all of the required safety precautions, measure the power cord to ensure that it's not damaged, measure if the PSU's enclosure is grounded, to turn on the PSU, connect the green cable for the 20 plus 4 pin connector to any of the grounds, measure every connector to ensure that they are outputting the correct voltages, and the readings must be within the ATX voltage specifications. I must warn you, the idle voltage test isn't enough to determine that your PSU is fully functional. To do that, we will need more sophisticated equipment like oscilloscopes, programmable loads and others. The purpose of this test is to determine the basic condition of your PSU. So if you have checked every component and nothing is faulty, then you may have to go back to your power supply. If you like, you can also check out my PC power supply wattage tutorial. It will teach you to calculate the wattage requirements of your PC. And so, this concludes my PC power supply troubleshooting tutorial. As always, send in questions, like, comment and subscribe for more tech videos. Happy holidays to all, the order signing out.